Hi internet friends, my name is John and in this video you're going to learn all about the Embraco Surface Controller. Now I'm recording this video at Christmas time, hence this epic jumper. And instead of creating the boring contact us form example that everyone else uses, instead we're going to spice it up. Yes, in this video we're going to be creating a naughty or nice list that's going to submit our Christmas requests to Santa himself within the main confines of Lapland. So in this video, I'm going to teach you all about the Surface Controller. You're going to learn how to post a form and all its data back to Umbreco. You're going to learn some good practice techniques to make sure it's all secure. I'm also going to go over two different techniques you can use to pass data from Umbreco Controller into our view. This is episode six in this series of how to build a website using Umbreco V8. If you like this content and you don't think I'm too much of a pillock, then please hit that subscribe button. Do it now. In this episode, you're going to learn how to build this epic form that you see all around you. Now, the first thing that you're obviously going to notice is, yes, I spared no expense when I designed this form. I actually paid a team of six developers and they spent six months designing this form and I think they nailed it. So the first thing we're going to do is start within the CMS and let's look at how this page is constructed. We are now in the Umbraco backend. If you want to download this sample site, you can from the show notes below. It's in my GitHub, it's free, so feel free to download it if that makes life easier for you. As you can see, I've created this very simple um, document type in front of us. It doesn't inherit from anything. In fact, it doesn't have any properties at all. And this is pretty much the only backend and back configuration that we'll need to do in order to get a form to work. So what we're going to be doing is building a component, which is of type surface controller. We'll go over that in a bit. If I go to the content tree, you can see I have a home page. I've also created this surface controller. And if I scroll down, you can see that it's of simple form example and the template is simple form example. So dead easy and back configuration. Let's go over to the code now. This is the corresponding controller code that I've created for the simple form example document type. As you can see, there's nothing special really going on here. I'm intercepting the Embraco request using the route hijacking technique. I'm using the view model pattern that I outlined in episode four to pass essentially the model which was generated by the model builder with an Embraco into our view. So just to prove how simple and vanilla this is, if I look in Solution Explorer, you can see that in my view folder, yep, you can see that that we have the simple form example corresponding view. If I look in the view, you can see that I'm just passing in the document type and at the bottom, things start to get a little bit more interesting. So, so far, everything's pretty vanilla, but now you can see I'm doing this HTML render action. And what this is essentially gonna do is going to call a partial controller and this partial controller is going to render our form. So in this example, I'm going to call a controller and it's going to be called the contact form controller, which is going to be of type surface controller. And the action within this controller that it's going to call will be called render form. This is the code for the contact form controller. And this is where the magic is about to happen. Now I'm not talking about Santa's magic. I'm talking about even more epic magic, routing magic. Ooh. So as you can see here, I've got a contact form controller and it's inheriting from surface controller. This surface controller is an Embraco thing. You'll find it in Embraco.web. But the cool thing about surface controller is it will allow us to do some component posting back without having to fanny about with the route table or creating custom routes. So what we need to do is define this controller, define this action, and we should be able to post to it using some special magic. Now in this section, we'll just focus on the render form. So this is a very standard action. We're creating a very simple view model, which we'll look at now quickly. Now this view model is a, there we go, that's easy to view. So this view model is using data annotations and data annotations is a normal .NET thing. This is an Embraco specific. So this is going to define the contract between our controller and our form and it'll be the same as when we're posting back our form to our controller this is the model which will get used now data annotations has loads of good bits and stuff in it as you can see we've got the required attribute to make something required and we can pass in error messages we've got this max length which will create validations automatically for us in our view 
Now, because this is a Santa's naughty or nice list, we obviously need some properties. So we've got the name, we've got have you been naughty or nice, essential, and we've also got the Santa's list itself. Now, if we go to our view, what we'll see in our view folder, hopefully you can see that, we've got this partials folder. And what we're gonna do is call the contact form view. So if we go back to the controller quickly, you can see, closing that down, I'm calling the partial view contact form. It's of type contact form view model. And in here, you can see that I'm inheriting from that view model. And we'll go over this in a little bit. What you can see, I've got this temp data thing here, we'll ignore it at the moment, but we're using the Umbraco begin form, that's more important. And in here, we're gonna do the post back. So when this form is submitted, it's going to call our contact form controller again, but this time it's going to call the submit form action. So looking back in here, you can see I've got this submit form action. We'll talk about this very shortly. Scrolling down, now for good.net security, you want to use this anti-forgery token. So this again is really important. And if we go back to our controller, you can see I've got this corresponding validate anti-forgery token. This basically means that people can't intercept your form requests and do malicious things. Now in our HTML, we're using the editor for property. So we're, bon we're binding, sorry, our view model and we're rendering out the name, the naughty and nice property, and the Santa's list property. And that's pretty essentially it for our form. We are creating a surface controller. We're creating this render form. The render form's calling a partial view, and our partial view is just being bound to this contact form model, which is using data annotations, and then we're simply rendering it out. If you make sure that you are crystal clear on this process, I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. And that will first start with me filling in Santa's list. So my name is John, and obviously I've been very naughty, so I'm gonna tick this. And for Christmas, I want a Lambo, which is Santa. Let's have a look quickly in our view so I can talk you through what I'm expecting to happen. So I've got this begin and bracket form. I'm making a post request. I'm expecting the contact form controller to be called. And within that controller, I'm expecting the submit form action. So going back to Chrome, let's do our request to Lapland. It's gonna take seconds. Boom, request receive. So as you can see here, I'm in the submit form action within the contact form controller. Nice, just as I expected. Because we had the view bound to the contact form view model, you can see that this has been passed in and it's been automatically populated. So I've now got access to all the form submitted properties straight away without having to do anything. I've decorated the action with the HTTP post attribute. This is really important. Now, depending if you're using a post or a get, not getting this right will result in a 404 when you try and post back to your form. This can be really annoying. So always make sure that you get this right. As you can see, we're now within a breakpoint in here. So this model state is valid. It's gonna check that the data annotations that we put on our contact form view model, the things like the required field or max length, they're all valid. If they are, we'll be able to pass to the next step. Amazing. So as you can see, we've now got this line which says temp data add custom message sent. And this is a very simple way of passing data from our controller into our view model. Now, normally I wouldn't recommend that we do this for normal circumstances. However, because we're dealing with a component on a page and we're also dealing with the Umbraco routing, this is an easy way just to pass data to and fro. Now, if I let this carry on, as you can see, we've now successfully sent our message because we can see this sent. And if we go back to our view, let's have a look at what that looks like. So at the top of our view, you can see that we've got temp, base, temp data and we're checking for the custom message property and we're looking for sent. So this completely ties up with this line here and job done. The other thing I didn't mention in this action is I'm using the redirect to current Umbraco page. So this means that we're gonna be redirecting to our simple form inquiry document type page. 
this won't be redirecting to the component because we can't access it directly. On line 24 here, you can see that I've also set a failure message. And if we go back to our view, you can see that I'm checking for this here. So now we have a nice way of creating a form in Embraco, not having to worry about the routes or doing anything with the routing table. And we can pass messaging to and from our forms so we can create more advanced, complicated features. This is option one. What do you think option two is going to look like? If you are feeling how the Grinch is looking right above me about using this temp data to pass information from a controller into a view, let's look at the alternative and walk you through it quickly. Now on the screen right in front of me, as you can see, I've cloned my form. The form is exactly the same as everything we've gone through already. However, the only difference is, is that it's submitting to a different action. Now this time when I click send, instead of being redirected to the same page, and then having that success message, I've been redirected to a different view. So let's see what's going on. This is the brand new action that I was talking about. It is called submit form one. Now I have the original submit form code above it right there, as you can see, so we can do a compare and a contrast. So as you'll notice down here straight away, we have no temp data. Instead, we've replaced the temp data with this empty view model. And now I'm using the more traditional partial view ASP.NET feature. I have a partial view called contact form one sense, and I'm passing my view model into it. And if we look back to the original one, you can see that we're using this redirect to current Umbraco page, also using this current Umbraco page. And we don't have this down here. And this is the reason why in form one, when we did a submit, we redirected to the current page and we had that new message. And in form two, when we did submit, we got jumped to a new view. And this is kind of the trade-off in these patterns that using the view model approach allows us to follow the MVC paradigm a lot nicely or nicer, that's probably better grammar. However, you're going to lose your header and footer. It is probably possible to keep your header and footer. However, you're going to have to do some more work and more coding within your partial view to make that happen. And this is kind of the trade off. Using temp data is actually much easier and it's generally a little bit cleaner because you don't have to worry about losing your header and footer. You can stay on the same page. You could submit forms. Santa's going to be happy. I'll have my Lambo. Things are going to be golden. For the curious among you, I thought I'd finish up showing you the success partial. There's nothing here that you haven't seen already, but just for completeness. So within our views partials folder, you can find our success partial. We're passing in a model and then we're just rendering some content. That's it. So out of the two approaches, which one suits you the most? Are you more of a Ebenezer Scrooge? You like to follow the MVC paradigm to the T and you like to follow process? Or are you a bit more hopeful, a bit more of a tiny Tim, and you like to work with temp data, and you don't care about breaking the rules slightly to make your life a little easier? <sighs> Merry Christmas. If you enjoy this content and you want to be a legend, please hit the subscribe button. I generally appreciate it, and it keeps me motivated doing these videos. If you want to do me a massive solid, please hit that like button. It just means that other people can view this content. Also, if you've got any thoughts or you've got any um, opinions about which is the best process, please leave some comments below. I get back to everyone. Anyway, hope you have an amazing day and happy coding.